Hey guys, this is the Saigami Project and my name is Andrea Otilia Vörös, aka Sani, creator of the manga series Saigami, published and serialized in Saturday AM. If you don't know Saturday AM, it's a bi-weekly digital manga anthology, kind of like Shonen Jam, but with more diverse creators from all around the world. I'm gonna leave all the infos and links down below in the video description box, so if you're interested, you can check us out. Today's video is something that many of you have requested ever since I started to use watercolors to color my pictures. So here we go, a tutorial on how to do a manga style uh, watercolor portrait. The artwork I'm drawing here is actually a fan art featuring one of the winners from Saturday AM's latest test flight competition. Test flights are contests for newcomers who want to join Saturday AM and they are really inspiring and really exciting and it's great to see all the talents coming for us in every new competition. But back to the drawing, first up I sketch loosely the lines of the characters with mechanical pencil and HB graphite lead and the paper I'm using is um, Soho 101 Maruman type watercolor sketch paper uh, I think it's a, yes, it's a Japanese type, and it's suitable for watercolor pen and colored pencils. So basically, for everything I use to make this image. When I'm working on my manga pages or black and white images, I usually start my drawings uh, with blue lead. I do the under sketches like that. But since this is gonna be a color image. I only use the graphite lead because it's easier to erase. Uh, some of the blue leads I use are also easy to erase, but uh, if I'm pressing the lines hard, uh, they can leave a trace. So I prefer to use only the graphite for my watercolor sketches. Also, please note that I don't press the mechanical pencil too hard. Um, it's easier if you are pressing lightly because uh, if you are uh, scratching your papers it can leave a pattern you don't want in your watercolors. As you can see on the left side of the table I have a printed reference image to the manga characters. Uh, this manga I'm drawing from is called The Monkey Way created by Michelle Massarolo and in my opinion it's one of the best submissions we ever received in the test flight and it's gonna be a series in Saturday AM and it's something that you should be looking forward to because it's gonna be awesome for sure. So I'm done with the under sketch, now I'm gonna start inking the page. For the inking I use a Zebra G pen with a Kohinoor type black ink. Inking on watercolor paper is something I like a lot because the ink seems to dry faster on the watercolor paper and I prefer to work on thick paper uh, with ink and watercolor paper is one of the thickest I work with. If you are using watercolor with ink, always be sure to check if your ink is waterproof. It can ruin your wall work if the water smears your ink and many of the fine pens are not really waterproof. For example, I just recently tested the Sakura Micron Pigma pens and they absolutely wasn't uh, waterproof despite the label saying on them. They can bear with a smaller amount of water, but for watercolors obviously you will use a lot of water. So always be sure to test and experiment before you are jumping in to working on your masterpiece artwork. Plus, I usually leave some time for the ink to dry perfectly, so when I'm done with the inking, I usually take a little break, it's also good for my hands, and uh, if you are stepping back from the paper and leave it there to some time, when you come back to it, you can also spot some mistakes you didn't recognize for the first go. So this way you can correct your artwork as well. When the ink had dried completely, I'm erasing the pencil lines and I can start the actual coloring. 
for the coloring I'm using Shinhan watercolor, Sakura Koi water brush and other types of regular watercolor brushes. The number one rule when you are doing watercolor image is to start with the lightest colors. So basically you're gonna add your highlights at first and if you want to leave some white spots be sure to keep them white or you can also use a rubber cement or masking fluid to protect your white areas. In my case I usually don't really leave too much white spots, maybe some for the eyes but I often uh, use color for the highlights as well. I always start with a light shade of the skin color and since I'm using the water brushes I always start uh, from the opposite side of the light source directions. So in our case here I have the light source on the top right side of the character so the shades are going to be on the left side of the character. Water brushes contain the most uh, paint when you are first touching the paper and as you use them and the water flops through them it can create a nice uh, gradient so even with the first layer of paint you can create a nice sort of gradient look in this stage of the painting when I'm adding the base colors I'm using a lot of water and because of this I have to wait a lot as well because uh, you have to wait till your base color dries in order to step to the next color. For example, here in the image I have the hands in the foreground. So after I painted them I had to wait before I jumped to coloring the t-shirt. Otherwise the colors uh, could have meshed in a way I didn't want them to mesh because of the water. So the most important thing you will need if you want to use a watercolor is patience. Um, actually painting this image based on the record video that I have here was no longer than two and a half hour but in reality it took me nearly four hours to finish this image because there was a lot of wait time between the layers of the colors. The water brushes I'm using for the first layers are great if you are uh, using them on a larger area. Um, for this video I marked my water brushes with different colors. As you can see the blue one is the biggest size. So I can easily do large areas with it in a relatively short time. But of course they are not really the best for uh, the smaller areas. Next up I'm coloring the hair. For this I'm using uh, a smaller size of water brush, I marked it with red and it's the medium size. But since uh, here I'm only working on the first layer of the hair which is basically going to be my highlight layer kind of, if you're thinking with photoshop layers. <laughs> um, it's not bad that I don't have that kind of even uh, gradient. I'm gonna have in the end. At some parts I can't really stay inside the lines, especially with the tiny strands of hairs and spikes, um, but that's not that bad because later on I can cover them. A bit info on the colors. Uh, the first layer of the skin tone I used here is a mixture of orange, red, white and a bit of brownish yellow. For the hair I'm using a light shade of brown with a lot of water. I work with a tube type of watercolors so it's really easy to mix the colors in advance. So when I start to work on my pages I usually have at least three types of different shades of skin color mixed in advance. Um, this is a big advantage when you are using uh, tube watercolors. When you are using watercolor pads, uh, mixing the colors can be a bit trickier. But I actually don't really have the experience with watercolor pads, so I can only give you information on the tube type of watercolors. 
when the hair layer had dried completely I go back to the skin layer and add a soft uh, shade of skin color for this I'm using this small uh, size uh, water brush I marked it with green the paint I'm using is not different uh, than the first layer but this time I'm using a bit less water so it looks a bit darker this time this layer is more like an indication of the hard shades uh, so most of the layer is on, on the left side of the face under the hair under the eyebrows under the nose and the mouth and next up I'm going to add a bit more of this shade um, on the larger areas I'm using a lot of water to blend the color so in this layer I don't want to have yet kind of hard edges for my shadows. For the neck part of the drawing I'm using now a darker uh, skin tone here. Uh, in this I mixed a bit more red and a bit more brown so it's much darker than what I used on the face. Uh, since my light sort is on the top right uh, corner of the page uh, the head quests uh, a darker shadow on the neck area so it's okay to use a darker shade here I also go back to the face and add a bit more stronger shades to the ear and under the hair and the previous parts since I like to use uh, soft uh, edges for my watercolors I often go back uh, to soften my edges with the water brush sometimes uh, even without uh, the paint so I'm just using the clear water to soften my drawing next up I'm bringing in a brand new color for the chart and it's actually a purple kind of shade um, a purplish brown at first and then pure purple or violet to bring some more depth um, yellow and purple are counterparts colors on the color chart uh, so they are working really well together and by bringing in the purple to this kind of orange and yellowish uh, shade I have here with the hair and the uh, skin color it brings more depth to the image as I'm bringing in some dark skin color which has a lot of brown this time and I'm starting to use more sharper shades but at first they were a bit too dark and too hard edges so I used uh, pure water to soften them I let the face dry a bit as you can see my paper had a bit uh, too much water so it's a bit wavy this time so until it dries I go to the hand Basically what I do here with the hands is the same process I did with the face. First I only adding uh, softer shades and then I start to bring in the darker uh, skin shades. First the orange brownish colors and um, after that I'm bringing in the purple as well. Since the hand doesn't have that many small uh, areas as the face, I can also use my medium size brush as well to add the shades. The thing I like with watercolors is that you can mix and blend the colors really really nicely. Even colors that uh, are hard to mix, for example when it comes to color pencils. Um, for example, the purple I use here is uh, something that I think it looks better in watercolor than with color pencils but also it's a bit of uh, gamble and experience um, sometimes you can't be sure how the colors will mix or do they blend nicely so it's better to experiment on a scrap paper because if you are using a brown color combination your colors can turn a bit muddy and uh, that can kill your image 
for example here I added a bit too much purple to the hand so it turned into uh, a shade of purplish orangish grayish that I didn't want it to have so I'm bringing in some more orange to give uh, a nicer and warmer uh, gradient to the hand Watercolor is the best, uh, in my opinion, if you are using uh, softer uh, shades of the colors. And uh, solid black is something that can ruin your image and all the nice and smooth uh, saturations of the colors. And since I started to use a purple shade uh, to the skin, I'm gonna stick to this kind of purple shading for the rest of the image as well. So on the white part of the t-shirt I'm using a mixture of soft grey and soft purple. And the same goes uh, for the top part, the black part. So whenever I'm mixing a new shade color, purple is gonna be the base of it. If you are using the same base color for your shades, it can help your image look better. Uh, you can also experiment with using various shades uh, and also various uh, colors of light and casted lights and it can make your image more interesting. But it's up to your imagination and experimenting. But this time I wanted to go for a more kind of harmonic look. Next up, I'm adding a base color to the eyes. Um, the character has a um, grayish bluish eye color, and this time I only added a really soft uh, mixture of gray and blue to the eyes. I'm gonna do the smaller details later on. And at last, we are shading the hair. Uh, coloring and shading the hair is one of my favorite parts. It's really exciting and this is the part where you can mix the colors and go crazy with them. So first of all I'm adding a darker shade of brown. It's the same as uh, what was my base color for the hair. But this time I'm using uh, only a small amount of water and much amount of paint. As you can see, I'm covering up most of my first layer. I'm only gonna leave a small part of it on the top and the right part of the hair. But later on I'm gonna cover that up as well. So I'm only gonna leave some tiny parts of this really really light shade. The character actually has a black hair or a really really dark brown hair um, but just like with the case of the t-shirt I'm not gonna use a solid black color I'm adding some really dark purplish brown to the left side of the hair but for the rest of the hair strands I'm gonna mix all kinds of colors and indicate the darkness of the hair for this I'm using a much much smaller uh, type of brush, um, it's a normal watercolor brush with no water tank and it's, it's, it's really soft and thin, not my thinnest brush but it's fairly thin to color uh, the small strands of hair accurately. After the dark grayish purplish uh, color I'm bringing in some more brown, this time a bit of warmer uh, gradient with more and less water at some areas. This is also the slowest process in the wall drawing because uh, I have to wait after painting the layers of the different colors. So I'm painting the few strands of hair and wait, then paint again and wait. Wait again and wait. It's really like a game of patience. 
but you have to do the waiting game because uh, if uh, you're not patient enough you can mix up the colors we don't want them to mix up so be patient guys this time I broke up my darkest shade it's it's actually nearly black uh, for this I used the uh, uh, watered up black and the purple. It almost looks black, but it's not solid. But it can help me to give depth to the hair. And it also helps the highlights to pop up a bit more. I'm also bringing in some uh, reddish brown and more yellowish brown. Basically, in this phase of the painting, I'm using at least six. Uh, different colors and even mixing those so in the end my hair is gonna have over 10 different colors included but I think this is what will make the image look interesting and make the hair feel more uh, alive in reality uh, if you're looking at hairs the different shades and different light sources will make the hair look really colorful with all uh, small gradients included and this is something that I wish to give back in my drawings as much as possible and by giving all kind of details and different sort of colors to the hair be sure not to overdo it you don't have to draw every single strands of hair and color them differently just be sure uh, to indicate the flow of the hair and the lights and the shades. So be sure to take poses and look at your drawing and, and try to do it with a smart head. After the hair had dried, I go for the eyes and add uh, depth to them. I add the pupils and uh, I also add a darker shade to the irises as well. Also the character has earrings so I'm adding a bit of color to those as well. And then I go back to the hair and add some more details to it with different colors. I'm also bringing in uh, purple as well. This time I'm bringing in some extra purple to the face. Um, with this I can add some more depth uh, to the face and the whole drawing. Um, I'm adding here some really hard shades with hard edges and dark colors. So this will make the drawing look kind of more 3D and less flat. This time I mostly concentrate on the casted shades, so under the chin, under the sleeve of the t-shirts, um, the sides of the palm and the hand that are uh, opposite to the light sources. For a bit of final touch-up, I'm bringing out some color pencils. What I'm using is nothing fancy. Uh, Crayola colored pencils, Kohinoor colored pencils and a bit of Faber Castell. I'm using some silver color for the earrings. And this is how I add uh, the extra colors and shades and depths uh, to the eyes. I'm bringing in a little bit of depth uh, to the pupils but only to indicate uh, the edges of the people and the irises. And as final step, I'm bringing out a white gel pen and I add a little bit of extra highlight to the eyes and to the earrings. And with this, ladies and gentlemen, we are done with our manga style watercolor portrait. I hope you find this video useful and that some of you will try out watercolors because it's really fun and if you have any questions uh, please feel free to ask in the info box below where? nope, in the comments yep, that's where you do it so <laughs> if you have questions just ask 
if you have enjoyed this video um, don't forget to like share or subscribe for more and don't forget that you can read my manga series Saigami at Saturday AM the first two chapters are up online for free or you can get the first volume of the series in print and in digital format as well and you can subscribe to Saturday AM for only five dollars a year and for that price you can get 20 issues of our bi-weekly exclusive digital manga anthology with some of the hottest webcomic including Apple Black, Bully Eater, Paradise Down, Monster Society of America, Clock Strikers and some more and even more coming. So that's pretty much it. Yep. Please look forward for my next video and until next time. Bye.